Yeah, I'm looking to get insurance coverage for my fleet vehicles, rental cars. Yeah, I'm gonna be having the cars on the Turo platform to ride share. Yes, Turo. Hello? What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. And today I'm here with another Turo video. And I've been getting a lot of questions regarding insurance on Turo how it works, what kind of insurance am I using? And I've been promising a lot of you guys that I would address these questions. So here I am to deliver. Now for you guys that are new to the channel, my name is Stefan Marquardt. I am a serial entrepreneur. I quit my job at the age of 25 and have been fortunate enough to run my business since then. I started Turo a couple years ago with initially three cars and since then I've turned into a six figure business. So I started this channel to talk about business finance, Turo, entrepreneurship, lifestyle, just things around that nature. So if you guys are interested in content like that, make sure to smash the like button. Also hit that subscription button and that notification bell so you can be alerted every time I post a video. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So like I previously mentioned on this channel before, besides during Turo, I also do uh, some direct financing or direct leasing, direct rentals, meaning outside of the Turo platform. Not that much, but some. And mostly the reason I don't do that much is because of insurance. Whenever it comes to leasing a car or renting one, financing in-house, insurance is by far the biggest factor, whether or not it's a good deal or a bad deal. The worst position an investor can find themselves in is having their asset destroyed without proper compensation AKA having somebody crash your car and they can't pay for it and there's no insurance coverage. So in this video, I wanna go over how Turo insurance works. The most common question I get from you guys is do you use your own insurance or do you use Turo's insurance when your vehicles are being rented? And the easiest way to answer that is really both. Now I know what you guys are thinking, why would you need two insurance policies for the same vehicle? After all, it is only gonna be one person driving this vehicle. Well. The easiest way to answer that or to break it down, for example, in the state of Georgia, when you register a vehicle, before you can actually get the physical tax for that vehicle, you have to have a lease uh, basic liability coverage in order to register that vehicle. Now, since Turo is not an actual official insurance company, or yet I should say, you're not going to be able to go into the tag office and get tags based on you want to use Turo's insurance. You're gonna need at least uh, liability coverage in order to register a vehicle. Since in my state, the DMV system is linked to the insurance companies, usually if you start off and have an insurance policy and register your vehicle and then you cancel the policy, usually you'll get one of those letters in the mail where they're threatening to cancel your registration. So not only do you have to have insurance when you register the vehicle, you also have to maintain that insurance throughout. Just as you can't register your vehicle with an uh, insurance policy from Turo, you also can't put your vehicles on Turo while using your personal coverage. Because if you think about it, before you get insurance quote, the insurance company is asking you all kinds of questions. They're trying to see what you're using the vehicle for, are you commuting back and forth to work, or are you doing some kind of ride share? or they wanna know who lives in your household because they wanna know who's gonna have access to this vehicle. They're gonna run a credit check. They're gonna run a, a driving score check. So based on all those credentials, you get your price of your premium. So it wouldn't really make sense for the insurance companies to jump through all those hoops and waste their time on the phone with you for 30 minutes in order to gather all your information just to give you a quote, just to cover anybody who drives your car. They're asking you these questions because they want to cover you. They want to know how risky you are. What if you don't really plan on driving the vehicle, you just plan on putting it on the platform and pretty much using it as a business like I do. I rarely drive my rental cars. The only time I actually get in it is for test driving purposes to make sure everything is still operating and there's no mechanical issues. It sounds unfair, but that's the reality of the situation that you will have to maintain at least a basic liability coverage just to keep the registration going. But when the vehicle gets booked on Turo, um, you're gonna have to select one of their insurance packages 
to apply to that reservation instead of trying to use your own personal policy that's assigned directly to you. Now, when you're looking to cover your vehicles, as far as insurance, there's multiple options. The more common one that is more easy to access, that's what we just talked about is the personal policy. Now, if you are like myself and you don't really plan on driving your vehicle, you're just using it as a business, then it would make perfect sense to get a minimum liability coverage on the vehicle just to maintain the registration. Because like I said, when the vehicle is on a trip with Turo, you're gonna be selecting a different insurance package. So your personal policy is not really gonna matter in this case. However, if you're financing the vehicle or leasing the vehicle, most finance companies or banks will actually want you to get uh, uh, full coverage or some sort of collision policy on the vehicle just so they're protecting their asset. Now, collision coverage could be substantially higher than a liability coverage. Um, so keep that in mind when you're playing your Turo business. That's why I personally prefer to buy my cars because I have the cheapest insurance I can get on these vehicles because I know when they're on the platform, I'm gonna be using Turo's insurance anyways. But uh, going back to the banks and the finance companies, sometimes they might also require you to purchase gap insurance. Now, if you don't know what gap insurance is, it's pretty much, it's gonna cover the difference between the vehicles in case of a total loss situation. So let's say you have a vehicle on Turo and the vehicle gets into a total loss accident and you still owe 15,000 on this vehicle. Let's say now the vehicle is only worth 12,000, but you still owe the bank or the finance company 15,000. That's the purpose of gap insurance. The gap insurance will actually kick in and pretty much pay the gap in between two prices. So let's just say you are in a situation where you're buying or financing a vehicle and you do have to get a full coverage or a collision coverage policy on this vehicle. And let's say you're paying $200 or 220 or whatever the amount is. And you feel like that amount is so high that you shouldn't have to pay Turo for insurance, well, that's definitely the wrong way to go about this business because what will happen is you'll find yourself in a position where somebody gets to an accident with your vehicle, you deny the, the insurance coverage from Turo, and now your insurance company is actually denying that claim. So you definitely don't wanna find yourself in this position. It could be a very sticky situation, especially when you still have a large balance on the vehicle. Just know that your insurance coverage you're getting for the vehicle is simply for registration purposes and when the vehicle is being rented on Turo you're going to select one of Turo's insurance companies it's just that simple don't try to make it complicated so and I know a lot of you guys are also wondering how you're supposed to actually get a personal policy vehicle if you're planning on putting the vehicle on Turo well it's kind of a tough question to answer when I first started I had personal liabilities on my vehicles and I was truthful with a couple of insurance companies and they pretty much just straight out denied me. I did find one company who was willing to underwrite a ride sharing um, addition to my policy but it was just very 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 high and basically the reason for that is Turo is still fairly new and the concept is still kind of new and insurance companies just don't know what to expect. So it's just easier for them to deny it. And I've been on Turo for two years and as long as you do things by the book, then you will be covered by Turo's insurance. But I would always say be honest with your insurance company, but also if honesty doesn't get you the policy, then where what are you supposed to do? I don't want to tell you guys to to be dishonest but at the same time when i was in the same position i did what i had to do i wasn't going to let anything stop me from getting into this business i always want to be 100 percent transparent with you guys and when i first started i was not honest with my insurance company i knew that i wouldn't be filing any claims through that policy so the next one i want to mention to you guys is commercial insurance and when i say commercial insurance i mean like my garage liability insurance i'm a licensed dealer in the state of georgia and we're required to maintain garage liability policy which is something like a general liability policy uh, which I could drive some of my dealership cars around for transporting purposes or for test driving with the customers. So I actually reached out to my insurance company for my commercial building and pretty much let them know what I was doing, that I was getting into ride share, and they agreed to cover me, but it wasn't much different from the personal policy because I still have to renew it 
every six months, and I still have to go through the same hoops by, you know, I got to give them the year, make, model, and based on those credentials with my credit score at the time or driving score would get my premium price. So even though it was a commercial policy, the really the only difference was that the policy, instead of being my personal name, would now be in my business name. Now, the fleet insurance policy I'm using is with a company called GMI. And it actually took me a little bit of searching to find this company. And when I spoke to them, I let them know what I was doing, that I had a, a rental car company. And I was, you know, most of my rentals were coming from the Turo platform. And basically how the fleet insurance works is they pool together a bunch of rental companies and all those companies share the premium together. But a lot of times, like if you ever rented a car, not even on Toro, if you ever went to a, a regular car rental enterprise or Hertz, you'll notice that they always ask you how you're, how you're going to cover the car. Very few times have they let me use my personal policy, but a lot of times they always require me to purchase an additional policy to cover this vehicle. Well, that's kind of how fleet insurance works. It covers your vehicle when the vehicle is on the lot, protects it from uh, damage or theft. Um, it can also be used as a secondary option for, let's say on Toro, the coverage goes up to 750,000. If something was to happen and you know we needed to come up with more money, Toro would only cover 750. I could then use my fleet insurance as a secondary policy. But even the fleet insurance is not meant to be used for your guests to just be riding around on. It's more of a policy that's hassle-free. I can add vehicles on uh, very quickly and effortlessly, and I can have those vehicles registered in my company name. But when it's time for me to do a rental, if I'm going on Turo, I'm purchasing one of Turo's insurance packages. If I'm doing a direct rental, I have another company that I can purchase collision coverage for, for my customers. So even though I do have fleet insurance, I'm not putting customers in this car dependent to be covered by my fleet insurance. So even though it seems like there's a bunch of benefits of fleet insurance, which there is, there's also, you know, a hefty fee with joining. Uh, you have to pay your membership fee. You pay every month. And also you have to pay an initial sign up fee uh, for basically the whole uh, program or package and just, you know, having the ability to join. And I believe the, I believe it cost me about three thousand dollars when I first signed up with the policy. And it's not necessarily the cheapest. My vehicles that are on my fleet insurance, it averages out to about one hundred dollars per vehicle. And, you know, I can definitely get liability insurance a little bit cheaper, but the pros definitely outweigh the con for the fleet insurance. For example, one of the things I love about the fleet insurance is that uh, most of my vehicles are in my company's name and the insurance is in my company's name. It just helps separate me from my business because like I mentioned when I first started, all the vehicles were in my name and the policies were in my name also. I want to be liable down the line and also if you plan on growing a larger fleet, like for example, you plan on having 10 cars, you don't really want 10 cars out there registered in your name. You can always get that knock on the door that hey, your car was being used to commit a crime or investigators trying to ask questions because you know, like the only information they have is your tag number. So now they're coming to find you, which are things that can still happen under registering your vehicle under your company's name. But it just helps separate the liability a little bit more. I haven't had anything crazy happen like that. I've heard some horror stories from others. I definitely wouldn't rule it out. It's part of the business. Anytime you're dealing with people, especially people you don't know, is always an unknown factor. You never know what they're going to do, despite how nice and how sure and they might be when they come to pick the vehicle up. I also love the fact that I don't have to keep renewing my policy every six months. Once I add the vehicle on, it's pretty much on there for good until I'm ready to remove the vehicle. And adding and removing vehicles are pretty, pretty much effortlessly. Uh, I send the email out, put the vehicle, the VIN number, and pretty much in the next day or two, it's on my policy. If I want to remove a vehicle, I pretty much take it off the next day. It's on my, it's off my policy. So just that 
time being saved from having to call the insurance company to cancel a policy or having to call the insurance company to run all the credentials to add a vehicle on your policy. It just saves a lot of hassle. So I hope you guys aren't too disappointed about the fleet insurance. I know a lot of people are thinking that it's something else. I think at one point I thought that also that once I get a fleet insurance, I could do away with Turles insurance and I could just pretty much pay one insurance cost keep all my profits from the platform, but it just simply doesn't work like that. I don't know of any insurance policies out there that will give you a premium to cover any vehicle for anybody driving it, no matter what happens. I mean, that's just a risk that I don't think any investors out there are willing to take. So we work with what we have, but if you guys do know of any such companies, definitely let me know in the comments what package I use when I put my vehicles on Turo. Since the change to Turo's policy uh, a couple months ago, I was on a 75% plan, meaning I get 75% of profit, Turo gets 25%, and at that time it was a no deductible plan. Since then, Turo has adjusted their insurance policies, so now I am on a 70% uh, plan, which is a 70-30 split. I get 70, Turo gets 30, and it does have a $250 deductible. Now, I know this seems kind of unfair, and a lot of hosts were complaining about that. Why would we have a deductible, but a rental business going all the way down? They're just trying to stay afloat and make sure they could still be profitable sometime in the near future. So if you wanted to get a no deductible plan on with Turo, you would have to opt for a 60% plan, meaning you get 60, Turo gets 40. Um, so it's it's a 10% more to Turo side than what I'm currently doing on my 70% plan, but this just works a lot better for me because a lot of times if I have a claim going on, I can eat up to 250. Now for the smaller claims, it sucks because if the damage is only $500, then I only get 250. But um, for the larger claims, like for the total loss situations, I definitely don't mind the 250. So it's Turo double dipping on insurance. I mean, the hosts are paying their insurance to protect their vehicles, and the guests are also paying insurance to protect the host vehicles. So isn't Turo getting double insurance money? To be clocking Turo and clocking how much money they're making, to be adding their young driver fees or daily fees or all those other fees that the hosts aren't getting anything of, it doesn't make sense. It's not very productive to sit there and add Turo's numbers you're better off adding your numbers and your profit and seeing if it works for you or not. And, you know, a lot of these claims, you know, you don't really know if they're getting the money back from the guests or not. Like, for example, I have two claims going on right now, one for uh, a little over $8,000 and the other one for about $7,000. So Turtle's about to give me a check for a little bit over $15,000. Now, it's not my responsibility to know that if the guest is going to, reimburse Turo for that. That's not my place. So just like I wouldn't clock those numbers, I wouldn't try to say, hey, did the guest really pay Turo that money back? No, I'm not saying that. I'm taking my check to the bank. I'm cashing it. I'm replacing the vehicle and I'm keeping it moving. So that's the mentality you want to have when you're in this game. Don't look at the platform and add up how much money the platform is making because at the end of the day, you don't really know how much they're making or how much they're losing. Just focus on your numbers because that's the only thing you have control of. All right, so that's it. I think you guys got it all out of me. That's pretty much what I got to give you guys on the topic of rentals and insurance. And that's how I'm currently running my business now. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section. If you guys ain't got anything to add on to that, please do. We're trying to provide value as a whole. And if you guys got any other videos you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Let me know what you think of my channel, my video overall. I definitely appreciate all the support I've been getting, everybody reaching out to me. I definitely appreciate it. And as always, guys, if you appreciate this, if I added any kind of value to you, to you or your life or your business, definitely smash that like button hit that subscribe button and also a notification bell so you can be alerted every time i post a video and i'll make sure to have one for you guys next week all right